Today I want to cover towers. Whether you need them if you have subwoofers or whether you need subwoofers if you have towers. A question I get often is why get towers if you have subwoofers? What's the point? And my own opinion has shifted a little, at least in terms of priority, and I'll explain that in a minute. As you can see, I got a new delivery, the SVS Ultra Towers. Uh, for those who are new to the channel, I'm the original SVS affiliate, and following my links in the description below supports this channel. It really helps a lot and allows me to keep this channel going. Now, I've been kind of putting off the Ultra Towers. Uh, I had some doubts. I wasn't really sure of the overall value, and that hesitation comes from a previous experience. I had listened to some $1,600 towers that were somewhat underwhelming. In that particular situation, I feel money would have been better spent on bookshelves, directing the savings to better subwoofers. Now, I knew the SVS Ultra Towers would be good. The reviews for these are off the charts. And SVS would have sent them to me years ago had I just simply asked. Uh, but once I hooked these up and got them dialed in, some preconceived notions of mine changed. Uh, a couple of things to note with the Ultra Towers is that running room correction is really important. Uh, I plugged these in using the room correction for the Ultra bookshelves and they sounded rather subdued. And this was different than any other SVS, or any other SVS speaker. Uh, I could swap speakers out within the SVS line without necessarily needing to run room correction each time. It just wasn't that big of a deal like it is with these. Uh, I also want to point out that you will most certainly get a polarity error when running room correction. Uh, just make sure your polarity is correct, positive hooked up to the positive, negative hooked up to the negative, and just ignore the alert. Uh, now, for reference, uh, I really like the way the Prime Towers sounded. Uh, they did fill in the mid-bass a little bit better than the Ultra Bookshelves, uh, and the Ultra Bookshelves just had a little bit more sparkle to them. And I was able to compensate for the mid-bass just by increasing the crossover a little bit. Uh, I liked running the crossover for the Ultra Bookshelves at about 100 hertz. And for some of you that might be new uh, to the channel and things like that, uh, that might seem high to you. Uh, but the thing is, when you're running flat response subwoofers, you can increase the frequency crossover with little penalty, especially with dual subwoofers. If you did this with typical subwoofers, you're likely to sound boomy. But with flat response subs, you can run the crossover much higher without sounding booming. Now, the Ultra Towers did something I did not expect. They added more mid-bass without any perceived penalty. It sounded fuller without sounding overdone or boomy like I have too much mid-bass. I can honestly say that these towers brought a lot to the table in terms of bass. It was better than I expected. A lot of people will wonder why you would need towers if you're running powerful subwoofers like these. Frankly, you don't need them. Want is really more of the concern, right? Before hearing these, my suggestion would have been to go with the Ultra Bookshelves or Prime Towers and put the savings into better subwoofers. Obviously, if you're already running dual PB16 Ultras, the Ultra Towers make total sense. But, you know, save for that, my suggestion would have been to put the money into better subs. Now my thinking is a little different. It depends on which subwoofers you're talking about, and of course everyone's priorities are a little bit different. But if you're running the PB1000s or PB2000s in a dual configuration, which you absolutely should, I think every subwoofer you should run in duals. Um, but in, in that situation with PB1000s or PB2000s, then I would probably stick with the Prime Towers or Ultra Bookshelves. And I'd go with the Prime Towers if you want a little bit fuller sound. And I'd go with the Ultra Bookshelves if you want a little bit more refined presentation. But where my opinion shifts a little bit is when it comes to your higher end subwoofers. Instead of getting dual PB16 Ultra, which I'm a huge fan of, uh, getting dual PB4000 and Ultra Towers instead of the Bookshelves is a great way to go. Now previously my opinion would have been to get the best subwoofer you can afford in a dual configuration, prioritizing that over the Towers. But I could see running these with something like the PB12 Plus over the PB4000s in order to fit it into the budget. I think the Ultra Towers add valuable reinforcement. I don't know if you can tell, but I got some wind going on. I'm, I'm, I'm in another storm. How'd that happen? Last time I had a tornado alert. But it's not just the bass response, by the way. Uh, the Ultra Towers are a lot more speaker. If you look at these 6.5 inch drivers, you might think they're just like the drivers in the Prime Towers. However, these are mid-range drivers. The base drivers are opposing 8-inch drivers in the bottom of the tower. Now, a lot of towers out there might as well be bookshelves because of the amount of base they deliver, which isn't much. The cabinet in the Ultra Tower is utilized in a pretty clever fashion. I'll go into a more detailed review about that later. 
But my big takeaway so far has been that these towers deliver something a little different. They add base response in a way I hadn't previously experienced, and it's truly good stuff. The other question that I posed earlier in the video is whether you need subwoofers if you already have towers with good base response like these. Now I don't want you to get me wrong here, these towers have pretty amazing base response. It's the best I've heard so far. However, as awesome as they are, they do not deliver the type of dynamics you get from dual deep bass subwoofers. These towers will go down to 28 hertz, which is impressive. However, I still cross them over at 80 hertz and set them as small. The important thing to understand about crossover in your AVR is that there is still output going to your towers below the crossover point. It's a gradual filter, not a hard filter like it is for your subwoofers. Now, I still think you should prioritize dual subwoofers that reach 20 hertz like those on the list. And again, I'm not just talking about having a 20 hertz rating, but being powerful down to 20 hertz. Most subs aren't powerful down to 20 hertz. So check out the list for subs that are. Towers like this give you more reinforcement in the mid-bass region than you would get from bookshelf speakers. Now, I knew that going in. I just didn't understand how much the Ultra Towers would add to the overall bass experience. Where I had previously questioned the value of the Ultra Towers, I realized that I was just missing out this entire time. These are stupidly good. I'll be doing a full review of these towers once I've had more seat time with them. I just wanted to point out some of the pros and cons of using tower speakers with subwoofers while it was still fresh on my mind. Stay tuned for more. I'm working on the RV project. I, I got the TV mounted and it's totally ridiculous. So it's turning out the way I'd hoped. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. Okay, so uh, I got a TV stand for the 65 inch LG and uh, got it for the RV here. And um, as you can see, I'm kind of working on the place, but uh, this wouldn't work by itself because uh, as you can see, this is pretty tippy, really tippy. So it might work fine in a house, but in an RV, that doesn't quite work out. So what I've done is, for those of you that are following along, I've taken the table and chairs out. I got a mosquito in here going after me. Uh, and what I did is that, that table was mounted really solidly to the wall, so I went ahead and borrowed that. And I'm no woodworker or anything like that, but uh, what I'm going to do is just basically strap this to this. I know it's not designed this way, but I think it's gonna keep it a lot safer than it would be otherwise. And I actually put this little cross down here so I can put one that goes down to the wall, or down to the floor. And uh, honestly, and looking at it, I don't really think that's necessary. Um, this thing is so sturdy as it is, I'm not too worried about it. So, I mean, I can really grab a hold. The wall moves before the boards do. So, uh, just kind of worked out. So, this is the project taking shape. Um, give you a view from this angle. And so, I'm going to move the TV up against there. Get some, I've already got some heavy duty straps. Uh, heavy duty zip ties. Uh, yeah, going real high tech with it, but uh, that should keep the TV from going this way and from going that way, which are my two major concerns. So uh, it does swivel. Um, so I'm probably going to, you know, do some straps or something to keep it more in place. All right, so I'm just about ready to take this thing out. I've got the slide in here, as you can see, and uh, I wanted to show you the completed thing here with the stand and what I think I might do is actually move this whole thing down that way in order to make more room right here because with the subs coming out that's going to make it kind of hard to walk by here um, pretty much have to jump over it <laughs> in that situation but uh, anyway that's just that's the completed thing there and uh, as you can see it's a lot more stable I mean it's still going to move but you know, it's 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 in there now. So anyway, I'm going to take this out tomorrow and see how it drives, make sure it's uh, holding right, and uh, hopefully I don't have a crash TV as a result, and we will see.